Around 13.8 billion years ago, the universe was born in the explosive event known as the Big Bang. Over time, stars and galaxies emerged, creating the cosmic backdrop for the formation of planets. On one of these planets, Earth, life evolved and flourished, culminating in the existence of humans. The journey has been amazing, but we humans don't know how everything started. We also wonder why anything exists at all. Despite our efforts to understand, we still don't have clear answers. Stefan Ulmer, a physicist at the European Council for Nuclear Research, said, If we pluck, in principle, the best physics theories, we would need to conclude that the universe, as we observe it, cannot exist. But here we are on a habitable planet living our daily lives and paying taxes, so either our laws of physics are wrong or we're missing massive pieces of the metaphysical puzzle. Well, in a recent observation, scientists found something extraordinary in distant galaxies, photographed by the James Webb Telescope and Japan's Subaru Telescope. Scientists have found extraordinary evidence in distant galaxies that may explain why our universe exists. Well, stay tuned till the end to know more about this phenomenal discovery. Welcome back, curious minds. Fasten your seatbelts tight as we embark on a journey to unravel one of the greatest mysteries of our universe. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Let's begin our adventure. Well, at first, to better understand this discovery, we must first know why the laws of physics say the universe must not exist. The Big Bang kick-started the universe as we know it 13.8 billion years ago. Many theories in particle physics suggest that for all the matter created at the universe's conception, an equal amount of antimatter should have been created alongside it. Everything from the sun to the device you're reading this article on is made up of the normal matter we know and love, composed of atoms built with positive protons and negative electrons, whereas antimatter is composed of atoms composed of negative protons and positive electrons. It's like the rebellious child of the Big Bang. When pieces of matter and antimatter collide, they annihilate each other in a powerful explosion, leaving behind only energy. Even when scientists create antimatter for experiments, the zippy particles must remain in a vacuum because an antimatter particle in a normal matter environment would immediately go poof. The puzzling thing about theories that predict the creation of an equal balance of matter and antimatter is that if they were true, the matter and antimatter pair would have totally annihilated each other, leaving the universe empty and neither any matter nor the universe should exist. So how did the universe come into existence? This indicates that there should be more matter than antimatter in our universe, but no one knows how this happened right after the Big Bang. Some scientists previously suggested that matter and antimatter are directly related to the amount of neutrinos and antineutrinos present in the universe. And if we find the neutrino to antineutrino ratio, we can figure out why there is more matter than antimatter. Recently, a group of scientists in Japan created a new method to study the ratio of neutrinos and antineutrinos in the universe by studying the helium content in distant galaxies. When the universe was first born, it was hot, dense, and full of elementary particles like protons, neutrons, and electrons swimming around in a plasma. Also present in this pool of particles were neutrinos, which are very tiny, weakly interacting particles, and antineutrinos, their antimatter counterparts. Just one second after the Big Bang, the nuclei of light elements like hydrogen and helium began to form. This process is known as Big Bang nucleosynthesis. The Big Bang model, one of the most widely accepted theories about the evolution of our universe, tells us that neutrinos and antineutrinos in particular played a fundamental role in the formation of helium nuclei. Helium creation in the early universe happened in a two-step process. First, neutrons and protons converted from one to the other in a series of processes involving neutrinos and antineutrinos. 
As the universe cooled, these processes stopped, and the ratio of protons to neutrons was set. Using a new model, scientists can calculate the number of neutrinos and antineutrinos in the universe. According to this new model, if more neutrinos were present, our model would show more protons than neutrons and vice versa. But how to find out the ratio of protons and neutrons in the universe? Well, here the helium nucleus emerges as a game-changer. Helium is made up of two protons and two neutrons, and hydrogen is just one proton and no neutrons. So the fewer neutrons available in the early universe, the less helium would be produced. Last year, the Subaru Collaboration, a group of Japanese scientists working on the Subaru Telescope, released data on ten galaxies far outside of our own that are almost exclusively made up of hydrogen and helium. Using a technique that allows researchers to distinguish different elements from one another, they found less helium than the previously accepted theory predicted. And according to the new model, less helium means more neutrons, which further indicates that the number of neutrinos in the early universe was greater than the number of antineutrinos. And most scientists believe that this asymmetry in neutrinos and antineutrinos could easily generate the abundance of matter in the universe. This is the reason why an imbalance must have arisen between matter and antimatter. This result surprised everyone as the discovery solved a century-old mystery of our universe, why our universe exists. The discovery also answered another important question, why is there something instead of nothing? Philosophers have traditionally responded to the question, why does the universe exist, in one of two ways. One response is that the universe exists because God created it, and the other response is that the universe exists for no reason, its existence is a brute fact. According to this research, our universe becomes actual not because God or anything else made it so, but because it literally lifted itself out of non-existence and made itself actual. The result of this research is a common type of result in the theoretical physics world. Basically, it's a viable way in which the matter-antimatter asymmetry could have been produced, but that doesn't mean it definitely was produced in that way. The fact that the data fits with this theory is a hint that the theory scientists recently proposed might be the correct one. This revelation has the potential to rewrite the rules of our understanding and perhaps even pave the way for groundbreaking theories that explain why our universe exists despite the odds stacked against it. It's the kind of discovery that could echo through history, captivating minds and sparking new waves of exploration. Could this discovery be a Nobel Prize-worthy breakthrough? It's not just about the recognition. It's about the doors it might open, the questions it could answer, and the countless possibilities it could unlock.